The baton twirl drill can help you embody that and it can help you understand within your body what it means to follow the golf club. Once your body's got that feeling that you can follow the golf club in time, that gives you one half of the order. Then all you've got to do is say, okay, all I've got to do is lead it in order, let it take over. Somewhere in the backswing is where it takes over. Basically, as soon as my hands get above my elbows, it's the point at which the club is going to take over. Because you, unless you try to, you can't stop it taking over. And here's the thing, which I disagree a little bit with the muscles stopping at the top. There's no need to stop anything. There's natural limits here. And Hogan said when he nailed his swing, it was because the swing would hit a set slot at the end of the backswing. Hit. He didn't slow it down. The club would hit it. Yeah, so he was right. I mean, they like have a, a spot that he was trying to remember to hit every no. touch every time it was just no. like it would hit the same spot for him right what the club does is crosses the the midpoint of you the third hits that point okay it hits that point on the other side of you is how far behind you can you allow it to go so when the club takes over you immediately begin to respond and the way that every golfer does that is they change legs. Great. This brings us to the question I wanted to ask you about specifically for tonight. So the thinking before was shift to the right, club goes to the right. Shift to the left, club goes to the left. And you said, no, for, for instead of that, think about it more in a, in a fashion working this yeah. way. Rather than this way, this way, this way, this way. So yeah. What is the mechanism of thinking about, yes, we can use a ground force pressure pattern, but not so much this way, put this way, like so yeah, swimmy, yeah. because that's not really yeah. super great for golf. Ground reaction forces are well understood. Okay. Everybody's been looking at those and that's fine. But the club reaction forces are not. People are not factoring in. What does it mean to have an unbalanced club in your hands? Ask any instructor that. What does it mean if the club's on? What does that do to you? Well, I can tell you, it screws you right up, okay, if the club is unbalanced. It doesn't matter who you are, right? And I think that's what happens to good players way more than anything. They get a little bit out of sequence, okay, with the, with the club head, which is traveling very far and very fast. They get a little bit out of sequence with that, and there's no way to recover. You do not have time to recover. No one thinks about it the club forces and yet they're real try right. try ignore try ignoring them we have to understand that we have to be ready to do something to the club to get it swinging okay and now we got it swinging and what we have to understand next is that club that we've gotten swinging and of course we've done it that club is going to do something to us and if we don't know what that is then we are lost but if you know what it's going to do to you, then you can prepare for it. You, you're not surprised. Okay. Somebody uh, who watches, been watching our videos is a engineer who's a genius with some of this uh, golf stuff and mm -hmm. was watching what you were saying about club reaction forces. And, and he made this video for us. I just want to share with you. Sure. What you're seeing here is Tiger Woods. This is after he won the Masters in 2019. So this is in actually in May of 2020. So what this is, is he actually mapped out the miles per hour of the entire swing. So you can see like right off the bat, it, it, it goes to five miles an hour, then it goes to six miles an hour, 11 miles an hour here. It's peak miles per hour is about 30 miles an hour in the backswing here. Mm -hmm. And the club momentarily goes to a little more than zero. It, no, it never goes totally to zero, but it goes... Near, near zero, then it goes up again, and then it goes to 122 at the bottom. Yep. Well, I was asking him, well, what would that mean as far as like force pounds, even just in the backswing or whatever? And he said that that starts to get really complicated. But basically, even when the club is going 30 miles an hour, that's, that's quite a lot of force that, like if uh, he said, the best way to think of it is imagine if Tiger just disappeared. 
and the golf club was still there, where would the club fly to? That gives you an idea. So about here, where so it's 30 miles an hour right there. Yeah, so the club the club would be going from where we're looking, it would be going up and left and it would be going there pretty far. And yeah. So I think what you're saying is that even in the backswing there, that has to be accounted for or else it's going to get real sloppy and out of position. Really, the steepness of the graph, because it's about acceleration, not yeah. speed, the steepness of the graph is when the graph is most steep, that's when it's pulling on you the hardest. So actually, even though it's 30 here, it's it's fairly flat there. But then right here, as it's decelerating, it's quite steep. And then out of the acceleration into the downswing, that's really pulling on you. But that technology looks awesome. I'd love to talk to this guy further. But I don't really need a machine to tell me that I'm getting acted on, right? Because if you come over to me and I'm just standing there and you push me, I, I know I've been pushed. You know what I mean? Like, you've just got to pay attention to this. Like, what is the club doing to you? The forces that are acting on you, they need to travel in relation to you in a way that your body is ready for and can handle. I don't advocate trying to control the shape of the swing as, as a video camera would see it, okay? Yeah, but you like need, talk about geometry. Right, but you need what, what you do need is you need the club in a good place, a good order, for want of a better term, in this, this guy, actually the other guy particularly, but sort of like how things are ordered at address, right, ready for that motion so that when it does go into motion, it doesn't disturb you. In balance, this is key, in balance, because if the club's not balanced up per the baton twirl drill and your motion's not balancing that, you won't stay in sequence. You'll, it'll get out because the forces will pull you out. And that's what happens to people. And are you saying when you get the forces working very laterally as far as step to the right, swing to the right, step to the left, swing to the left, that is throwing you out of balance with the club reaction forces? And you, and you won't 100%. 100%. Now you can That's do it. You, really you know why you, you know why you can do it? You know why you can do that really well without a ball? Because your brain's not doesn't care where you are because the, the ball's not somewhere. So you can do this anywhere. And it feels great and you're like, "Oh, this feels great." Until you got to put it on. Yeah. Yeah. It feels awesome. If your brain, if your club dynamically, and this is a let's jump back here, this 5 to 1 ratio, this explains it. The reason your average golfer doesn't swing it at a three to one ratio is because they can't handle the forces. If they swung it at a backswing dynamic that would give them a three to one ratio, they'd fall over because they're out of position and they're not ready for it. So they take a backswing that they're ready for and then they make a downswing. Okay. Whereas your player that's really good, he's like, yep, I know what's coming here. This is going to, this is going to tear us up here and it's going to come down here. So, okay, I'm ready. Boom. Go. Ball. and it's all ballistic for them it's a ballistic action there's no decisions mid-swing oh what do i do now there's no time for that it's ballistic it's like boom for an adult learner or someone who is good as a junior who's lost their game i advocate and people might not like the way i talk about it but i advocate understanding because i don't have to think about this while i swing because i know it when you know it, you don't have to think about it while you do it. You just do it. The decision's made. This is the order I'm in. I'm going in this order. And I go. Okay? It's not like, okay, what do I do next? No, no. There's just an order that I go through. Okay? There's nothing else. Okay, so, like, uh, that that makes me think of a, a few comments that people said, like, uh, well, if you think about you know, how much of this stuff do you think Dustin Johnson even knows? You know, and some of these these players that people see as just like purely athletic players that don't get into the technique and stuff, like they think like, oh man, if, and this there's some tour players that live in my area that um, kind of clown on me because they know that I, I'm i going around asking all these different people about how uh, how to swing the golf club and stuff. And, and they messaged me and said, uh, people have won, tens of millions of dollars on tour saying like, you think I thought about any of that stuff when I was trying to win? So 
I would not add that they were really young, and I'm like I'm an adult learner. So so how does that? Well, the difference. That's the difference. Is that like the difference is so monumentally huge. Okay, and here's the other thing, right? So let's take Mike Weir. Okay, so he was a stud in 2003 till 2007, right? Then he lost his game, and then he got into the stack until he, he won again, and then you know those guys helped him off the ledge but it didn't it didn't solve his problem okay so he still had problems so and this is the thing you you cannot get an adult to turn their mind off when they hit shit shots and this was the thing with mike when he hit a shit shot he was not happy with my response Several times, I'm not saying in general, but just several times, he was not happy with my response as to what went wrong. Okay, my version of events. He was like, no, it has to be something, you know, more than that, etc. So, not every tour player is is at that stage where these guys are saying. But what they're what they're a hundred percent right about is that they're not thinking about this while they're playing. And to ask how many golfers understand tour players. My teachers don't understand this, and it drives me crazy now. I'm like, why did I have to sort that out? Right? Honestly, Lee, why did I have to be the one to say that the club head's one end and the feet are the other? I mean, that's obvious now. It's obvious. Okay, which means that everything, there is nothing in the golf swing that isn't between those two ends. Everything is ensconced within that, that frame. Nothing's outside it. And here's the thing, guys. Nothing can move truly from you in a direction that isn't right through that system. You think you can move over here and over here, but that's, a, that's just a fallacy that your brain's playing a trick on you. You can't move right and move left. Like, you can only move from your foot to your ankle to your shin to your knee. to your th You can only move through you, okay? You can't move over there. Right? Unless unless the whole of you moves, like if all of you moves over there, then then fine. Right? So when you're walking down the street, all of you is moving over somewhere. You're going somewhere. But in a golf swing, that's not what good players do. They don't go somewhere. They are in a motion within them that produces a motion without them. Okay, Brendan, I want to show you my version of the stepping drills. And I would say that the, the essential goal in terms of creating one continuous motion um, is shared with Dr. Kwan in terms of his stepping drills. There is a bit of a difference though. And I, to me, that's not an insignificant difference, okay? That is that I want my, my stepping to be and, and also my, my preparation, I want to be in, in the same, all in the same direction. Okay, so I'm not going to be stepping, throwing the club to one side, stepping to the other side, and then when the club swings to, the, to that side, stepping away from it back to the other side to swing the club back to the side. That's a lot of this side, then this side. So it's a change of direction, okay? So... I believe Dr. Kwan's uh, exercise is a, it looks like a really good one, okay? I think what I'm going to show you here, the directness of what I'm going to show you, I believe works better in a game where the ball's sitting somewhere very specific. I don't see why we should move this side of the ball and this side of the ball. Of course, the swing must do that, but our intention and our effort doesn't necessarily need to do that in order to hit the ball. Okay, so that's the difference. Um, everything else about his, his drills, especially the continuous motion part, I think are fantastic. So, so how we're going to perform this, I'm going to start with, I'm going to stand about, and you'll, you have to do this a few times to know, but I'm roughly a nice comfortable step too far away from the golf ball. Okay, and so from there, I stagger my stance open. You can see my left foot's back a bit. My right foot's forward a bit. And 
I'm going to do that because I'm going to, I want to feel this, this verticality, if you like, in my right axis, which again, Dr. Kwan talks about wanting to be up that right side on the backswing. 100% agree with that. I don't think you have to shift to the right to achieve that. Okay, there's, there's a way in which you could set up, like for example, Rory already sets up, you know, he's got that spread over to the right side at address. And it's not like he has to, to move a great deal to, to get up that right side. He's kind of already there, although the club's away from there, okay? And the club meeting that is really what accounts for the weight shift. But I sort of digress there. So I'm looking to stay vertical in that right side. I'm staggered open. And what I'm going to do is in the right sequence of the swing, I'm going to send the club up in the air like so, just out in the direction roughly of the ball. I'm not trying to be too precise here. Then I'm going to, using my feet to push, using both feet to push into my right heel. So I rock into that right side, again, directly away from where the club goes. So the club goes straight out here. I go away from that to begin the swing. Then when the club swings away, I step away from the club. Now the club goes straight through to the finish. Now the, the timing of the step away is, again, a little bit different to thinking that people believe that you need to step to the left before the end of the backswing. I want you to think that the club itself um, has to cross basically the midpoint of your body is the easiest way to think of it is that when it crosses the midpoint of your body here and when it crosses uh, a point above your elbow where your hand gets above your elbow either or both of those cause the club to take over and go to the other side of you and it's the club going to the other side of you which is now the trigger that the club's going the club has changed direction relative to you it's still going in one direction itself change direction relative to you that's when you step away from it okay so that gets quite wordy but but i want to be specific about these things and we can discuss this as we go so there's a very defined sequence here and there's a very defined direction to this drill and it happens to coincide with the exact direction and exact sequence of the golf swing which makes it a great drill because it's not like the baton drill which is there to design to teach you this second part of the swing primarily this one is actually the whole swing moving directly at the ball okay so I'll see if I can demonstrate this. Now, as I get more warmed up and comfortable with that drill, <coughs> here's the final piece of it is, I send the club towards, I rotate away into my right heel using both feet I step away, club goes through to the finish, and then I finish by stepping roughly where the ball was. Okay, so that I'm, I'm continuing to stay in my direct action all the way to the finish of the swing. Okay, so that's the, that's the goal of that drill. What that looks like down the line. Again, you've got to be in the right sequence. That's crucial. The direction takes care of itself. If you don't go directly at the ball with everything, okay, it becomes obvious to you straight away. Most people, when I give them this drill, the first thing they'll do is turn over here. And they're unable then, they're unable with their body turns they are unable to step directly at the ball in sequence. 
it becomes more or less impossible if you don't go in this one direction. So it's a little bit higher, I think, initial learning curve to some other step drills you might see out there. But that's okay. We've got to, we've got to learn the right things from it. All right. So here it is down the line. And I started a little bit too close, but I was in sequence, okay? So I wasn't able to step freely enough, but that's okay. I haven't done the drill myself in some time. I don't really need to do this drill anymore because I, I developed it so that people could learn what I learned from messing around with this drill and getting quite proficient at it. I'll just come back, I'll show you one. Thanks for watching that guys. Thanks to Martin Ayers for coming on the channel. I have hours and hours of interviews and zooms and footage and then also some drills and other things that I've put up on the Be Better Golf members page. So that's here on YouTube. If you click the little join button that's below, you will see all this content. And I've also been putting up like daily vlogs of my range sessions as I've been trying to incorporate this one constant direction of flow and letting that kind of dictate everything rather than like being really positional. Just really trying to get one direction, not backswing, downswing, or jump this way, jump that way, or throw this way, throw that way. One constant kind of infinity loop or Mobius trip, he's described it as. It's a uh, really interesting and lots of uh, specific drills and like ways to do that. It's all on the Be Better Golf members side. So you'll see uh, a ton of content with Martin and then also uh, things that I've done on the vlogs and everything like that. And plus there's gonna be stuff coming out on Be Better Golf because I think I might be getting a new special Be Better Golf facility where I'm gonna do a lot of this stuff out of. You'll see it all at the members page. So if you click that join button below, it really helps the channel. And then it also gives me a chance to just put stuff out that is like totally, Martin called it the fire hose, like everything just goes out on there. And then I take pieces of that and then I cut that into actual Be Better Golf video. So it's a good chance to get just everything, everything out. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe button. Bye.